Hey folks, it's John here, the Blood Angels Commander. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, Forge World and uh, in particular a Leviathan Dreadnought Siege Claw. I had to double check that. So I got my Leviathan Dreadnought here and he is magnetised and um, what I mean by that is um, if you move him, maybe you'll see the, the weapons will move a little bit. Um, so magnetized um, and for I don't know why but even the heavy flavors have a little magnet in them um, I guess I was living in hope that maybe one day we would have a different option than using heavy flavors however I guess the interesting thing now is um, heavy flavors are maybe getting buffed. So, um, this is obviously the Grav Cannon and this is the Storm Cannon Array and uh, two heavy flavors. Uh, so, uh, the Leviathan Dreadnought is very strong, but I figured with the new uh, Deep Strike rules um, coming in on the edge of the board, I mean, coming in the edge of the board with the Storm Cannon and the Grav. Uh, Grav bomb bad. Um, it's quite a lot of shots. The storm cannon gets ten, and then the grav bomb bad gets like heavy two, but more against hordes. But uh, I thought that maybe coming in with the storm cannon and a siege claw would be cool. So I have here a siege claw. I, I mean, I just opened it, and in true Ford World fashion, there are no instructions whatsoever. Um, we've got two little uh, leads. We've got like the harness thing, um, some other bits, and then the actual claws themselves. So if you're familiar with Forge World, then you'll know that these actually feel kind of sticky when you get them, and that they actually do need washed in like, I'd say lukewarm soapy water. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's what we're going to start with today, um, and also um, in terms of like magnets, uh, I'll put a link in the description below for the size of the magnets that I've used here and um, what I try to do is basically just um, buy very thin magnets and then file off a bit and stick them in and uh, it seems to work quite well. So yeah first step then is to get a bowl of warm soapy water and get all these cleaned. Um, I think probably what I'm going to do is, these aren't called sprues. Um, the name eludes me of what these are called right now, uh, but we'll get them all off and we'll clean them and then we'll get them into hot soapy water. So yeah, that's going to be step one. Okay, so we'll just try and snip everything as close as we can. Oh, I think they're called gates. These are called the gates. I don't know why. Um, I only have a handful of Forge World models. I really want to get a Relic Contemptor Dreadnought. I think I might get one um, next month. Uh, I think the the rules are coming in really strong in Ninth Edition, and I think I could make one work with my Blood Angels army in in. Sometimes it's easier to take it off further away and then that let your snippers get into where you actually need to be. Uh, yeah, so I think a Relic Contemptor Dreadnought was a really good option, but um, for here... Yeah, and the problem with the Forge World stuff, uh, in my opinion, is because they don't provide instructions, you sometimes don't know exactly what you're supposed to snip off and what to snip off and when they do and provide instructions they they tend to be pretty lackluster like I get that Forge World's supposed to be for like experts in the Warhammer hobby but I bought a the Falchion uh, heavy tank destroyer and it was so difficult to make um, so uh, hopefully I'll share a video of 
of the heavy tank destroyer soon and we'll talk over its stats. Um, it got a slight uh, decrease in points in, in 9th edition so I still don't know if it's it's super viable but uh, it did get a point deduction so um, maybe there's a list that works well in. Uh, maybe you guys can uh, join me on that video and help me make a list that includes a super heavy tank destroyer. So this this gate is quite difficult in that I don't I don't 100% know what I'm supposed to be taking off and again uh, okay so now what we need to do is uh, try and file away where they did come off the gates And again, I just use an older kitchen knife for this, but if you've got a hobby knife, that would probably work as well. Um, I guess just be careful because you can cut yourself doing this. So yeah, I did actually buy two Siege Claws for this guy, um, but I don't think there's any advantage in the rules to having the second Siege Claw, like it doesn't even incur in it, you would think it would just give you, like, sometimes when they have two close combat weapons they get an extra attack, but no, I don't think it even gives an extra attack, so, um, I mean, I guess I'll probably, I'll probably make it. Um, at some point and paint it but I wanted to try this guy out on the tabletop soonish so that's why I thought what I'd do is I'd get this uh, this one siege claw made and magnetized because with all the changes for ninth my hobby table or my my backlog of stuff that I'm working on is quite significant so there's only so many hours in the day So I thought one siege claw will be fine for the moment. Um, fortunately, this guy was magnetized. So yeah, I think I'm going to magnetize the the relic contemptor when I buy it as well, just so that like the rumor is about ninth edition right now that auto cannons might be getting a lot better. So I mean, if an auto cannon does get a lot better, then maybe um, maybe an auto cannon would be an option for the. The Relic Contemptor, because I could believe it can have a twin auto cannon arm, so you could have two of. Um, yeah, and do you know what? The times that I've used this guy before, his limiting factor really has just been his range, in that the Storm Cannon has a 24 inch range and the Grav Flux has an 18 inch range. So quite often he would take a lot of firepower before he would get anywhere near 18 inches. Um, whereas now, for 2 CP, he's a power level 16 unit, so he can come in for 2 CP. If they do increase heavy flamers to 12 inches, then he's going to come in, be able to shoot off his 2 heavy flamers and unload 10 strength 7 minus 2, 2 damage shots from the storm cannon, and then, uh, as a blood angel, have an 8 inch charge. Uh, potentially because you get plus one to your charges as Blood Angel. I mean the other option is you could redeploy like an, a Chaplain. Actually no I don't think you could do that can you because I think the Chaplain's litany's only buff units. I'd have to double check that rule. I've never I've never used a Chaplain to try and buff a Dreadnought. Um, okay so that is one cannon there. So yeah we will basically prepared this earlier, which was a lukewarm bowl of soapy water. Uh, let me take my watch off. And um, probably what I'll do is I'll get a couple of pieces of kitchen roll because we'll need these to dry before we can really do anything else with them uh, and like fully dry. So I'll put the kitchen roll here and like I've got a cheap nail brush. It's like from Poundland or something. So, again, making do with 
the cheap tools that that I have. So it's just a case of they feel slimy because there's some sort of mold release chemical. I don't know exactly what it is um, that they put in to get these. So it's just going to be a case of just give them all a quick wash. Uh, and you need to do this with any Forge World model that you get. Uh, it's it's simple enough, but uh, it's just an added pain, I guess. Um, I don't I don't understand why these models couldn't be plastic uh, like the regular ones, but um, I mean, maybe as as the technology that Games Workshop have used to make the plastic models has improved. Um, some of these older models or what they would moulds I guess never have been updated uh, it's probably why some of the characters still use those old fine cast models um, so as I'm sure as the technology eventually gets updated at some point we'll get they'll stop making these but there's probably quite a lot of like overhead and cost in, in producing or getting these ready so it's probably just that So it doesn't, this doesn't doesn't take much. Um, I also don't know why they don't wash them like on mass before they send them. Like surely they could just have like a spray or something that sprays them, lets them dry out, and then they and then they ship them. But no, I guess it, it's a, you know it's it's kind of bad in this little box because in this little box, if you're new to Forge World and you've never bought anything before, if you bought like one of these little boxes, then you don't you don't know about this step. Um, but, uh, you know, like if when I bought my big tank, then it definitely said um, you need to wash everything. So, yeah, it doesn't take long. Oh, lost it. The only reason I didn't dump them all in the water because I'm going to be paranoid that I lost something. So. Okay, is that it? Looks like it. Alright, then I guess we are letting this dry out. And then we will start looking at putting it together and also um, we'll look at how we're going to magnetise this one um, to work with the magnets that I already have on here. So, um, I don't think these two arms are interchangeable in that, like, I guess the magnet polarity is different between the arms. Yeah. So, um, that's why I've got two claws, I guess, now. Um, if I'd done that correctly and got the same magnet polarity. Uh, but do you know what? This is the first model I magnetised, so uh, lessons were... Mistakes were made, as they say. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so that's why there's two claws, but uh, okay, so we'll let this dry off and then we'll see how we can go about getting, about constructing this. Obviously we can't use plastic glue for this either, we need to use super glue. The glue I would recommend is the Gorilla Gel, it's amazing, it'll stick anything, including your fingers together, so I guess watch out for that. But, um, yeah, uh, alright, so we're letting this dry off and then we are moving on. Okay, so I've been on the Forge World website checking out this claw thing and um, from what I understand is if you look at the back of the Leviathan you can tell it's been magnetised can't you there's these little things inside there's these little things here and the idea is I guess that one would have gone over the top of that so that wouldn't be glued in so this would go over the top of that and that's how the power cable would attach to the claw. So um, I guess it's interesting that I bought two because um, yeah I mean I guess like so that almost takes like that whole part of the kit and just says so these two cables and these two silvery things like like I just don't need those at all and then um, if you look on here where it's attached, so my magnet, I actually attached the magnet to the bottom of this part, which is where the weapon would normally attach. Um, 
So my magnet is already basically stuck to this. So in doing that, I mean, maybe I should have, in hindsight, maybe I should have filed that off and just stuck the magnet there or filed a hole in the middle and stuck the magnet there. I don't need that part either. So then really all I've got to do with the claw arm is I've got the joint, which is where I'll put my magnet. I've got the claw part itself that would stick in the front. And then I've got the three claw things. And then this is some sort of shield, I think, for the back of the claw. Uh, haven't entirely worked out which way round it's supposed to go though. I think um, I think it's supposed to go this way round, so that like it's basically covering the weak point of the joint. Um, I believe. So uh, this should actually be a very very simple video then, or a very simple thing to to do. Um, so we've got our super glue, uh, the new Gorilla glue that I got. And we're just going to put a little bit of glue in this joint here. And I guess the one thing to decide is each of the claws can be at almost any angle that you want. So you can have them closed or you can have them entirely open. I think I'll go with like a 45 degree angle on these claws. Um, So that attaches like that and also you, I guess you can decide on how angled down the claw will be um, in terms of like how far to the ground it points. Uh, I'm probably going to have it at the highest angle it can be at. Um, I don't see any reason not to have it at the highest angle. Still not sure about this armor piece. Uh, let me take one of these off. Do either of these have a, a protective part on the back of them? No. Does the Ford World website have a 360 of this? Yeah, okay, so you can see it. That part is in there protecting the back. So, first of all, though, so we'll stick the That's too much glue, I think. Okay, and that's glue all over my fingers. Yeah, I'll be peeling that off later. This is the great thing about the actual plastic glue, or the great thing about the Games Workshop building everything in plastic now so we don't need to mess around with the we don't need to mess around so much with super glue because yeah I'll be picking super glue off my fingers for the next week no doubt okay and then a little bit of glue on the back there They have that shield really high up, um, but maybe that's based on the angle that they have the claw at. So yeah, I mean at that point it's almost fully assembled, right? We just need to stick the three claws in and then decide on a magnet for up there. So I'm going to leave those to dry for a minute before I try and stick the claws in and I will find a magnet. So I'll take this arm off and we'll look at the size of the magnets. So yeah, I'll definitely link the magnets down below. And I seem to have lots of different sized magnets here, but this one seems to be the right size. These are crazy dangerous, so make sure you keep, like the strength of these magnets is nuts, uh, considering the size of them, right? Like. Uh, 
I can drop that from that distance. Um, yeah, I mean, like, they hold um, these gun arms. So, interestingly, what I've actually already done with this magnet is I've painted one side black uh, with, like, a Sharpie, like a, a permanent marker, and the reason for doing that is that it means that I'll know which side needs to stick to the model. So in this case, the black is sticking to the arm socket there. So I'll need to stick... If the black is sticking to the arm socket, then I need to stick it here with the black out, essentially. Um, so that's... It's, you know, it's super easy to do, actually. Uh, try and put not too much glue because when I squidge this magnet down onto it it'll move all over the place. Uh, I'll use my knife to position this. Right. Do you know what? I won't use my knife to position this because it's sticking to the knife. I'll use the butt end of the knife to position this. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, I think at this point I can just stick these these th three siege arms in. Um, siege claws, sorry. And I think they're just going to need a little bit of glue on the underside of each one here. I think that magnet's actually moved a lot of it as well. Let me see if I can move it back. And the final claw. Right, unfortunately I don't think I have any white paint at the moment because um, I like to spray... Do you know what, I might have a little bit of white spray. Might not have much, but I might have enough in the can to spray this. That would be cool if I did. Um, I think that looks kind of neat. I don't think the claw needs to be open any more than that. Um, Yeah, I mean, it looks like a dreadnought's fist, right? Okay, so these old bits, I mean, I'll just throw them in this box for a minute, but I'll probably just spin it. And I'm going to leave that to dry for a minute, and I'm going to go search to see if I have white paint. Um, but yeah, we'll let that dry, and I mean, it might have been, it might be as simple as that, like that arm might be magnetised, and these powerful little magnets, the ones that will link you, uh, you really don't need to do much with them in that, like I said, I could have filed away this and maybe embedded it a bit, but I mean, it looks like these magnets are one millimeter thick, so I've just I've just literally stuck it to the thing and um, yeah, I mean, if I stick them on, maybe you can see there's a small gap, uh, but it'd just be two millimeters and I mean, I, I guess there's a bit of movement on it, but I mean, I don't think it'll fall. Like, how much can I shake it without falling? I, I don't really want to shake it any more than that, but, um, yeah, they're, they're super strong magnets. Okay, so great. I did run out of white spray, but uh, I just used black. Um, what we'll do is we'll just finish the coat, 
so we got half of it sprayed white then just finished the coat with black so we'll just paint it white before we go any further but um, you can see there then the magnet has been sprayed over um, and hopefully I haven't tested this yet uh, it should be just a case of bingo one magnetized claw arm has a decent uh, degree of movement on it as well and I guess because it's a bit lighter than those other arms uh, there's no there's no actual movement in it whatsoever so groovy um, that was actually very easy so yeah if you're um, putting together a dreadnought a leviathan or some other uh, expensive dreadnought from forge world I uh, highly advise magnetizing I was actually looking at ninth edition rules thinking a claw arm leviathan would be really great so I just went on and I was, I was literally like pricing up I was like how much is another leviathan dreadnought and then I was like oh I'm an idiot I magnetized this one so um, yeah I guess uh, this did not come back to bite me uh, this has actually been great and now I have the option for the storm cannon and the claw so that's what I want to run this next week against my friend and uh, yeah so I'm going to try and uh, speed paint this claw I guess uh, or at least get some red on it so it doesn't look like I mean at the moment it looks like C3PO right with his uh, one weird arm why did they even give him that red arm in the new movie I don't know but uh, yeah uh, okay so uh, thanks again for tuning in I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you saw how easy this was with Forge World even with the lack of instructions and uh, yeah it's something you'll consider next time you are looking for a new dreadnought alright so I'll see you all in the next one uh, until next time my friends Peace.